as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We are back with another Quarantine TV edition of Real Fans Real Talk. And uh, we got we, we got a special guest with us in the building tonight. You guys know we are huge boxing fans on the show. And uh, every chance we get to, uh, to highlight a fighter, we are more than happy to welcome them onto the show. And um, today... We have with us. Uh, this is actually crazy because this is a uh, this is Women's History Month uh, this a month, and she's about to make some history. Uh, Kiara yeah. Dettori. <laughs> right. How are you? Welcome to Real Fans Real Talk. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, we got a whole lot of boxing to get into, but um, I did mention you are about to make some of your own personal history uh, this yes, this coming uh, week. You will be making your pro boxing debut uh congratulations to you on that just uh talk to me a little bit about the about the fight uh thank you i'm really excited it's gonna be um on sa um, saturday coming up in mexicali um i'm fighting out of gleason's gym uh with my coach don saxby um also some of my other teammates are gonna be fighting and uh, i'm ready um i studied the girl i have my strategy down and i'm just ready to execute Okay, that was I was gonna I was gonna um ask you about that as well. So you have been uh studying your opponent. Um, of course. What, what 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 would you say is is her best attribute? Oh, she comes forward a lot and she applies the pressure a lot. Um, so I guess that's the main thing. Um, so with my style and my skills, it's not something I'm gonna have a problem with. Um, I have a lot of tools that I can utilize and make a lot of adjustments. I like to use angles. Um, so um. Like I said, uh, nothing that I'm worried about. Okay, okay. And you're training out of Gleason's uh, gym, which is maybe one of the most legendary boxing gyms uh, right. in New York. I've been there several times. H how was that? How was that experience training out of Gleason's? Honestly, it's awesome. I just transitioned into Gleason's uh, during the pandemic. I was in a, at another gym, and I really wanted to, you know, take my training to the next level. And I know Gleason's is the best gym for women's fighters, hands down. Um, we have Heather Hardy, Veronica Jeffrey, um, you name it. We have a bunch of world champion women fighters. So for me being in there, it's like amazing. And it's the growth has been amazing, honestly. Just being in their presence and training alongside world champions makes me want to be even better than I want to be, you know, if that makes any sense. So I really love being there. No, I, I get it. It gives you a little bit of, of that extra motivation because anytime Absolutely. you see the, the, the plaques on the wall, it's always an inspiration. And, and then you want to go out and then show and prove, like, I'm supposed to be here amongst these great women fighters. I want to be up there. I want to be up there. That's right. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so March yeah. 13th, we, we're definitely going to be looking forward to that. Is is the is there, is there going to be a live stream of the fight or how, how are they working that out? They're definitely going to stream it. Um, it's probably going to be on, on YouTube. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post a link in my bio. Um, and, yeah, it'll definitely be streamed. Okay, great, yeah. great, great. So let's, 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 let's go back a bit. Uh, when, when did you first get into fighting? Because I know you, you were actually kickboxing prior to step, stepping into the boxing world. So just talk to me about your start in the, in the fighting. Yeah, so I started with mar like a martial arts background. I started at six years old. And I've been competing ever since. 
And uh, I was competing nationally, internationally, and I won many national and international titles in my other sport. Uh, I could say it's not really a kickboxing sport. It's called point fighting. And the best way to explain is like kind of taekwondo. So it's like speed fighting. You score and whoever scores first gets the point. So it's a different, obviously, than boxing. But honestly, I've always wanted to be in a, a contact sport. You know, I wanted more, you know, because I like to fight. So I started boxing like five years ago. I, I wasn't competing, but I was always training hard. And, you know, a few years, you know, a few years ago, I started getting more serious into it. And I know I was like, I want to go pro in this sport, you know, because I, I feel like naturally I have it, you know, and I train hard. And so here I am making my pro, my pro debut. Have you, have, you, have you had any amateur fights along the way or are you just jumping straight in? No, I had, uh, I only had one amateur boxing fight. Um, so I'm going off all my experience from my other sport. I've been tra- I've been competing for a very long time, 20 years in my other sport. So I have a lot of experience being in the ring, being under pressure, um, strategy. I have that experience, so I'm not worried. What was the transition like? Because boxing is, is a little bit different because one, there's no feet involved anymore. So yeah. what, what was that transition like for you? Um, the, on, the only hard part of the transition was fighting in the pocket. That's something I really had to learn. Um, but honestly, as, as far as that, the footwork was very different than martial arts. We stand different. Um, but honestly, if you put in the work and the hours and you really want something, then, you know, it, it just comes, you know. So that's basically it. Okay, okay. So talk, talk to me now about training camp leading up to uh, this Saturday's fight. Um, yeah, so I've been training all throughout the pandemic, so I've been ready to fight the whole time. Um, but as far as the training camp, it's been awesome. Uh, I've been doing my strength and conditioning. I have a nutritionist, um, and uh, you know, I've been eating right because everything is important, not just you know the boxing aspect. And then I have you know the best sparring partners. Um, so honestly, it's been great, and yeah, it's been a great training camp. What uh, what weight class will you be fighting? One thirty. I'm gonna fight at one thirty. I'll see how you know how I like it. Maybe I'll go down in the future one twenty six, but not uh, not lower than that and not higher than that. Okay, one thirty is is middle or, or welter. I think it's welter. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, that's I guess that's the that's the, the 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 weight that you're most comfortable at. Yes, that's my most comfortable weight where I feel strongest and fastest. So I'm gonna. I'm going to try that weight out and see and kind of go from there. Okay. Is there a particular fighter that you've modeled your boxing style after or is like everything is kind of just you, which is a whole new thing? Um, I like to take a little bit of everyone and watch everyone, you know, like Clivers for Shields. She just came off an amazing win. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Lomachenko. His footwork is amazing. Um, Theofimo Lopez is just sharp mm-hmm. he's just sharp he's from brooklyn i gotta shout him out yeah shout out to, yeah <laughs> definitely you know ryan garcia just had an amazing win i like to take a lot like you know i like to watch everyone and like take some things and make it my own but ultimately i am my own fighter i have my own experience my own background and i want to bring into the sport you know some of what i used to do and mix it with boxing so something that people have never seen that's what i'm looking to do okay um now i know i know you You've had a couple of surgeries on on your legs, and I know you said previously, which is kind of why you're switching over to to the boxing. At any point, would you ever think about going back into maybe an MMA or doing anything like that, or you are you just gonna stick to boxing? Yeah, um, yeah, I did have three knee surgeries, two ACL surgeries, which is they're very invasive. But um, in the future, I, I might you know just see how I am now, and if I you know if I don't have any issues then I would try an MMA fight. Has, has, has that affected your mobility in the ring at all? The, the surgeries? No, no, no issues with mobility, no issues with anything. Uh, it's just something that I've just, just been wary of. And, you know, you know, with big surgeries, you want to avoid trying to have another one. So I've just been wary. That's it. But as far as athleticism, nothing has changed. So just more of maybe a mental thing. Yeah, basically. Yeah. How, That's how- about it. How, cause, cause one thing, you know, a lot of people forget is how big your mental state is, uh, in, in the sports world period, not even just boxing, but really in mm-hmm. boxing, just because you, you, somebody's trying to take you out. 
So yeah. how do you prepare yourself mentally to now step into the boxing ring? Um, honestly, I've always had the fighter in me and I don't feel like when it comes to like fighting, I like, you know, I've never thought about, I don't think about what other people are going to do. I think about what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? And I guess it hasn't, not something I've ever really thought about. I'm just going to step in there and fight and that's it. Okay. Has, has training been different or difficult because of COVID? Like, has that affected you in any way? Um, the sparring, uh, yeah, in the beginning I wasn't, you know, I couldn't get as much sparring. So yeah, definitely that when it comes to the sparring aspect and that's very important for me. And thankfully it has picked up on time for this camp where, you know, more people were available to spar with me. So yeah, it definitely has affected. Okay. So it was more so just the availability of other fighters. Yeah, that's it. That, that only, that's the only aspect of it Do was you, the spar. When you, when you're sparring, or just when you're training in general, are you are you wearing your mask to spar, or how's that how's that work? I wear my mask doing everything aside from sparring. Yeah, so I can't, you know, it's very hard to wear your mask when you're sparring, you know, because um, yeah, you need to be able to breathe. So yeah, um, obviously we, you know, we take precaution. You know, I don't just spar with anyone. We, you know, we do what we need to do. Take temperature. You know, make sure you have a, a negative COVID test. You know, of course, and then, you know, it's a small group. And, you know, we make it work. Okay, so like the gym, like they have everyone test for COVID. Yeah. And then, okay, okay, so absolutely. so it's yeah, pretty yeah. safe then. It's pretty safe. Yes, absolutely. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah. Um, all right, so question. Now, I was I heard around the campfire that you might be doing a little bit of modeling and acting as well. Is that accurate? Um, I mean, somewhat accurate. Nothing like, you know, set in stone, but it's something that I would be open to. Okay, so you but so your passion is still fighting. Oh yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My full time passion is boxing. Okay, so now, so just question. So if let's say Law and Order SVU called and said, "Listen, we <laughs> want you to, we're going to give you a, a major character role in this," and then at the same time you get a call from Clarissa Shields' camp and they say, "All right, it's time for that 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 title fight. Which one are you going to?" I'm going to that title fight. You already know. Okay. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's what I, that's what I wanted to wanted to yeah, hear. Yeah, right yeah. There. All right. <laughs> so, all right. So, talk to me a little bit about women's boxing. Um, you know, because I know it, women fighters don't get the same, I guess, type of press that the men fighters yeah. get. Mm -hmm. So, just talk to me a little bit about that in and the journey of, of a woman fighter. Yeah, honestly, like it's, it's an almost, you know, even my, in my other sport, it's just, it was the same, you know, similar situation where the woman fighter you know, didn't get the same attention, didn't get the same purse, you know, as the male fighter. So coming into boxing, like, you know, I already know, you know, what to expect in that aspect, but I also feel like it has evolved a little bit over the years. You know, obviously we're not where we want to be, and I also feel like like what Clarissa Shield is doing right now, that it is going to evolve even more. And then myself, you know, coming into the boxing world and, you know, making a statement. I know I'm going to make a statement early on and, you know, and just keep on pushing to try and get the same equality. You know, that's all you really can do. So. I got you. I got you. Definitely. Um, all right. So if you, if you, if you had uh, a, a uh, woman's boxing Mount Rushmore. Who's on it? For women's boxing, Katie you only, Taylor. You only get four. Remember, Mount Rushmore is only four, so you can only get four names. Oh man, Katie Taylor. Okay. Amanda Serrano, she's a beast. Okay. Uh, so obviously Clarissa Shields, because I've been talking about her, and my fourth one is kind of hard. I would have to need more time for that one. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I got it. I got because you listed four names and I didn't hear. There's two names I'm surprised I didn't hear on your list. And I'm not done yet. Oh, well, you only oh. get four though. You can't come on. I told you there's only four. I, I, I got three. I, I got three. All right. And then my fourth one would be Veronica Jeffrey from Gleason's. Okay. So you're picking a lot of the home team. Yeah. Okay, because now I got it. Because I got all right. So I got to call you out on this right now. Because again, you still didn't. There was two names. That you didn't mention that sh that on the Mount Rushmore, and I got to call you out on this. One of them is uh Christy Martin. 
Where I saw that coming, yes. And the other one is Layla Ali. Yeah, I knew that. I knew you were going to say that. Come on. Um, how are you going? You can't have a list without Layla Ali now. No, you're right. <laughs> no, of course. Yeah, yeah, I have nothing but a lot of respect for them. But I feel like, you know, with the newer fighters, they're, you know, it's a, it's a different era, you know, and, and they have a different style now, you know, and boxing always evolves, styles evolve. So I just, that's why I picked my top four, like, you know, for the newer era fighters. Okay, but, okay, okay. I got you. I, I, I give, I'll give you that. I know legends. I know the legends. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So, because there was a lot of back and forth, you know, this past year, year and a half with Layla Ali and Carissa Shields. So, I know. so you, do, I heard. You, do you feel like it's, it, Clarissa Shields got that if they actually ever yeah. stepped in the ring? Yeah. Uh, listen, she is the truth. I, I love Cl Clarissa Shields. Yeah. You know, She's a great she, fighter. And you know what it is that makes her a great fighter? Her, her mental, like her mentality is just on point the way she speaks she's you know she talks like a champion you know what i mean so yes. one of the things that's all it's very inspiring to me now is that so. is that something because all right so even with that you know that one of the things that will enhance uh i guess the fame and notoriety and also enhance the bags is is how well you can talk up a fight so how how good is your talk game like talking shit you mean you got you got to because you got to sell the fight come on what's up i'm gonna sell the fight definitely um but you know i'm more of a humble person you know what i mean like i don't see myself like talking shit to anyone but yeah i, I feel like i would definitely you know you know talk up a fight and you know sell tickets and you know just be you know entertaining i would be entertaining 100 percent. okay okay well, but you know yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm looking forward to it because I was I was watching a lot of of your martial arts stuff online, but now you know that you're making that transition over to boxing. I'm really looking forward to uh to to watching this fight. Um, would you would you um you. would you would you try for the the Olympics because you you're still eligible? I think up until I think if eight fights, I think it is either eight or nine fights. I heard. Fights. Yeah, I heard if you're pro that you can still fight in the Olympics. Yeah. So yeah, I would try. Definitely. I would want to go for that. hundred percent. Yes. What, what would be different as far, or would anything be different if you were training for a slot on the Olympic team, as opposed to just regularly training for a fight? I think it's like the fight, you know, it's more of an amateur style. So, you know, pro style and amateur style is different. So I would have to, you know, you know, fight in more volume, right? Cause that's okay. how amateur is. You don't have a lot of time you know, to think and, and set up your combo. So it, the training and the sparring would be different, 100%. Because it's more of a, it's really more of a points type of yeah, situation yeah. With, with the Olympics. So it, would it would be an adjustment, but, you okay. know, nothing hard to adjust to. Because I think, I think, I guess the Olympic boxing is probably closer to, like, the Golden Gloves. Exactly, boxing, yeah. And the way that works with the with the point system and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, but, absolutely. Was absolutely. that something that you ever, like, because I know, I mean, I know things are a little bit different now as far as with the Golden Gloves. But did you ever want to fight in the Golden Gloves? Yeah, I was registered before the pandemic. Ah, and, okay. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Because that's one of the things, you know, I felt like would be, a, you know, a good accomplishment going into pro, you know. So, Definitely. Um, but fortunately, it didn't work out. And I didn't want to wait so long to fight. There's no amateur fights now. I really want to get in the ring. So I was like, you know what, I'll go pro. And then in the future, hey, I'll go for the Olympic, you know. So there's other options. Cause you, yeah, cause make you, you definitely because you, you you have time as long as you don't get past that uh that that fight limit you can the still eight, the eight fights yeah right. you can still uh you know try out for the Olympic team so you still have a little bit of time are you are you planning on fighting often because you know now a lot of fighters yeah. if you get if you get one one fight a year you're lucky no I'm I'm fighting often I already have a second fight date oh okay really uh yeah when, when's already the, set when's the next date. It's going for April tenth in DR. Okay. Also, oh, that's that's a uh, quick turnaround. Yeah, I'm trying to you know stay active and I, I'm just, I've been training this whole time, so I'm ready. You gonna, might have to get your get your Tyson on and get a quick knockout, you know, in the first thirty seconds. And hey, then you never rest know. Up. Never know. <laughs> you gotta, listen, you got to speak it into existence, man. That's right. Yeah. That's that's so. that, that's what it is, man. I I, I know uh, you you're you you you're ready. You seem like you're really ready to jump into that ring, yeah. and you get you, like you're pretty much traveling around the world to fight then now because you said you're going down to Mexico mm -hmm. for this fight, then you're going to DR yeah, for your next yeah. fight. Your passport about to be crazy. 
Yeah, my password box is crazy. That's right. But um, yeah, it's hard to get fights, you know, that are more local, and we we have to travel for them. Um, that you know, because of COVID. But you know, we gotta do what you gotta do. You know, I gotta get my fights in, so it's all good. And I get to see, you know, different parts of the world. So it's a win-win. Yeah, de- definitely. You get to travel. Yeah. And do what you what you love to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then hopefully 100%. you'll be able to get back into the states and get a fight. Maybe by the time towards the end of the summer, maybe you'll be able to get something you know here in the United States. Yeah, one day hopefully you know fight uh, fight at the Barclays Center, MSG. You know, never know. And, um, where 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 are you from originally? From Brooklyn. Okay, all right. In Brooklyn, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to, just wanted to make sure that for the people they they got to know you know how. Uh, they gotta know. <laughs> yeah, because that's what you know. We, we 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 from Brooklyn too on this side. So. Oh we, really? Yeah. So I just wanted people to know we got we you know Brooklyn is different. We support our own. So that's you know, right. definitely we'll be we'll be rooting for you uh, this Saturday as as well as in April and then and, and moving forward. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Re- uh, really quick. Um, you know, we've been dealing i guess with a lot uh in the country and with the the climate of things that are going on in this country do you think um that it's an athlete's uh job to speak out on i guess social issues social injustice feel, issues if yeah if yeah if, if you have a good like a plat like a platform you know and if you're you know well known then yeah you should be an advocate for you know, anything. So use your platform, not only for boxing or fighting or anything like that for things around the world. So yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. That's one of my goals too. You know, when my name gets bigger and, you know, people get to know me, I want to be an advocate for, for things as well. So yeah, hundred percent. Okay, cool, cool. We definitely, you know, once we're still locked out um, of the TV station right now, but uh, once things open back up, hopefully by the summertime, I'm definitely gonna have you come down to the TV station because we're actually downtown Brooklyn. The uh, the TV oh, st- yeah, the TV yeah. station is downtown Brooklyn. So once things open uh back up, we would definitely love to have you actually come down to the station, and then we can kind of follow up, keep posting on what's going on with your career. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, I would love that. All right. Well, awesome. listen, uh, guys. Um, I want to thank you so much. Matter of fact, before before we get out of here, please let the people that know um, the folks at home know. Give them all your social media if they want to get in touch with you so they can follow you and stay abreast of everything that's going on with your career. Got it. Um, so my Instagram name is C underscore D one T. Um, and I don't have any other uh, social media platform. So if you need to uh, follow me on Instagram. And we'll, 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 we'll definitely, we'll repost the, um, the flyer, uh, for the fight. And then once you have the, uh, the stream and everything, we'll post that up as well for the people at home that, that so they can enjoy the fight. Sounds great. All Sounds right. awesome. Well, Thank you again for having me. Uh, this was awesome. And I'm looking forward to our next one. Oh, yeah, definitely. We might. I might have to bring you back for a quick fight recap uh, after after next weekend. Hey. Just, just so we yeah. can talk about it. All right. We'll talk about it. Yeah, no problem. All right. Appreciate you. Don't forget, <laughs> as soon as you get that link, send it over to us because we are going to enjoy this fight. I got my popcorn all ready to be popped. So, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so you much. And um, for you guys at home, I will see you guys uh, back next week. Eric will be with me, and we got a whole lot of sports talk that we will be getting to. Uh, With that being said, we up out of here. Peace. All right. Bye. Smush Parker here, formerly up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought